Hello, this is Mrs. Groves, and today we're going to cover the last section for the unit on exponents. And our agenda for today is that we're going to cover the 8.3 notes. And during the time, this time, we're also, the first thing we're going to do is make sure to review all the exponent rules. And then we're going to cover 8.3, which is how we change negative exponents to positive exponents. So let us go to the next page. And I'll make this even a little bigger. And I'd like you to write down all of these notes, be, and you might want to put them on an index card so that you can memorize these key rules for dealing with exponents. So the first thing is that for numbers, which are constants, Throughout, when we simplify exponents, we treat numbers just like we would treat numbers. If we have to multiply, we multiply the numbers. If we have to divide, we have to divide the numbers. And we leave as simplified improper fractions. So now the properties. If we have the same base and we're multiplying, then we add exponents. So in this case, the base is A and we're adding the exponents M and N. So for multiplication with the same base, we add the exponents. The next property is the power rule. Now notice you have parentheses here. That's how you know it's the power rule. And in this case, we multiply exponents. So we have a m times n, m times n. Now, again, notice we have parentheses in the next example. And we have to distri distribute the exponent m. So again, we multiply exponents. And in here, we have a, b, and the exponent is an implied 1. So 1 times m is a to the m. b, the exponent 1 times m, is b to the m. Now we have division. We have the same base, A, so we subtract exponents. And it says A is not equal to 0 because we can't divide by 0. So in this case, for division, the quotient rule says that if we have the same base, A, we subtract the exponents, M minus M. Again, the power rule. Notice we have parentheses. We have to distribute the exponent m to all the factors in both the numerator and denominator. So we have 
a, the exponent is 1, 1 times m is m, so that's a to the m, b, the implied exponent is 1, b is 1 times m, so that's b to the m. A couple other properties I want to, or one other property I want to discuss is the zero property. So anything a to the zero, anything to the zero is one, except zero to the zero is undefined. And just as a review, if you have a to the 1, it's the same as a. So these are inter interchangeable terms. a is a to the 1, and a to the 1 is a. So I'll give you a moment to finish those very important rules of exponents. And also, not only do you need to know the rules of exponents, but you need to know order of operations. So if you understand the rules of exponent, the order of operations, and you work slowly through the problems, you're not going to have any difficulties with exponents. So that's all a review. So now we're going to go to page one and we're going to learn the new material. And this we just discussed. This is the zero property rule. And the zero property rule means that anything to the zero, a to the zero is one. So for example, a five to the zero is one. And in B, I'm going to give you that zero to the zero is undefined. Now on your chapter test, you're going to be able to use a calculator. So if you get yourself confused, you can always put into your calculator, remember, 5 carat 0, that's 1. And if you put in 0 carat 0, you're going to get an error message, so that's undefined. Now, in this, these notes that we're taking, you will not need a calculator. So, that's rule number one. And then rule number two is going to be negative exponents. And 
students get confused, but it's really not that confusing. Okay. If we have a to the negative n, and we want to make it a positive exponent, we simply take the a and put it into the denominator. So now we have 1 over a to the n. These examples we'll do in a moment. Right here, we have a negative exponent, and we want to make it a positive exponent. So we bring it to the numerator, so it's a to the n. Kind of think about it this way. Negative exponents are unhappy exponents. We want to make them happy. So we move them to their happy place. And all that is is switching them between the numerator and the denominator. So why does this work? Negative exponents to positive exponent. Okay, why does this work? Let's take, okay, and we'll call this C and we'll call this D, just because we call that A and B. Let's take example C. And we have A to the negative N. And obviously that is over 1. Now, let us multiply this to be a to the n over a to the n. Why can we do that? Well, a to the n over a to the n, isn't that 1? And we can multiply anything times 1. So, in this case here, we are going to get a negative n plus n is going to be 0. Okay, so if we multiply those, we add the bases, we get 0. In the denominator, we have a to the n and a to the 0 is 1. So this becomes 1 over a to the n. Okay, so let's try it with D. Here we have 1 over a to the negative n. And we again are going to multiply it by 1, which is a to the n over a to the n. The numerator is a to the n. The denominator is a negative n plus n, which then gives me a to the n over a 
negative n plus n is 0. So that is 1. And we are left with a to the n. So now I want you to take your moment and I want you to do these two problems. And you're not allowed to use calculators today. This is over 1. It's a negative exponent. It's unhappy. We move it to the denominator. We get 1 over 2 to the first. And we simplify it to 1 half. Here negative exponent. We want to make it happy. We move it to the numerator. We get 2 to the first, which is simply 2. So take a deep breath before we do some practice problems. And I'm going to work through these with you. So here, think to yourself, negative exponent, I want to change to a positive exponent. So to do that, I move it to the denominator. So the denominator is 2 to the third but I need something in the numerator, and so that is 1. And then this is so easy to simplify. It's 1 over 2 to the third, which is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. All right, you do B. Think of the definition of the zero property. Anything to the zero is one. You're done. You could have done it the long way. The long way would be to distribute the zero. So you would have had 5 to the zero. x, 2 times 0 is 0. 5 to the zero is 1. Times x to the zero is 1. And the answer is 1. Before we get to C, I want you to do number do D. We're going to go back and do C. That's the most difficult of these problems. Negative exponent, it's unhappy, it has to go to the denominator. So that means that it's going to be 0 to the 7th. And 0 to the 7, what's in the numerator? It's a 1. Okay. 
you could also think of it as we're taking the reciprocal. So the one goes to the numerator and the zero to the seven goes to the denominator. So zero to the seven, well, what is that? It's one over zero times zero times zero times zero times zero times zero times zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one over zero is what, everyone? It is undefined. Okay, E. Now we have positive and negative exponents. So this one is unhappy. We have our fraction. To make this happy, this has to go into the denominator. So that is x squared. Okay. So rules only move negative exponents. Then we have everything that's a positive exponent. Well, y cube is happy where it is, so it stays. 2 is happy. It's the coefficient so that it has to go in the front. And our variables must be in alphabetical order, so that goes in the back. So positive exponents do not move. Oh, this is the most difficult one. There's two methods to do this. Method one, this is power to power, is to distribute negative three. Okay. Method two is flip the fraction so if we distribute the negative 3 that is going to give us 5 to the negative 3 over 4 to the negative 3 And then, okay, this is the symbol for change. We're going to change negative to positive exponents. So that means that to make the 5 happy, it has to go into the denominator to give you 5 cubed. To make the 4 happy, it's got to go into the numerator. To go from a negative to a positive, it's 4 cubed. 
And now that is simple to simplify. 5 cubed is 125. 5 times 5 times 5. 4 cubed is 4 times 4 is 16 times 4 is 64. So that's one method. The other method is that I'm going to flip the fraction to make the negative exponent into a positive exponent. Right. So that means that I'm going to take 5 fourths and I'm going to change it to 4 fifths and now the exponent is a positive 3. So now I'm going to distribute the positive 3. I'm going to get 4 to the 3rd over 5 to the 3rd, which is the same as what we had over here. So this is going to be 64 over 125. Most students prefer method 1. Personally, I prefer method 2. So you should do the method that you're the most comfortable with, with dealing with these fractions. So now we're on to the next page. And there's one more rule that I want you to add to the top here. Is about negative exponents. So a to the negative n is going to be 1 over a to the n. We take the reciprocal. 1 over a to the negative n is a to the n. So we have all of these rules, and we want to evaluate these exponential expressions. Okay. And what you have to remember is to follow order of operation. So, in this case, what's the base? You're correct. It's negative 5. The base is negative 5. Okay. So, we have negative 5 remember use parentheses for negative numbers. Same base, we add the exponents. 4 plus negative 4. And you need to show the work. Gives me negative 5 to the zero and again anything to the zero is what yes it's one okay in this example 
notice the parentheses. That tells you it's power to power. And that means we multiply the exponents. 5, okay, and we're dealing with these exponents. Negative 2 times negative 2. Two negatives is a positive. 5 to the 4th. Okay. And 5 to the 4th is 5 times 5 is 25. Times 5 is 125. Times 5 is 625. So notice if you go nice and slow, follow the rules, you're not going to have any problems. All right, now we've got negative exponents. We don't like negative exponents. You're not allowed to have negative exponents in your answers. So we know that that has to go to the denominator. So that becomes 2 to the third. That is negative, so it has to go to the numerator. So that is 4 squared. And the x is happy where it is, so it just stays where it is. So, step one, change negative exponents to positive exponents. Step two, simplify. So the answer here, you probably already have it done. 4 squared is 16. We have the x. And 2 cubed is 8. Oops. Can I simplify that more? See, that's why it's good if you have, since you do your, your work all in pencil, and you don't have to worry about whiting things out when you make a mistake. The answer here is what, everyone? 16 divided by 8 is 2x. Okay, this one's a little bit more challenging. So the first thing I'm going to want to do here is I'm just going to take my positive exponents and I'm going to keep them where they are. At the 3 squared, we have the x. So now I have to make my negative, I mean my negative exponents into positive exponents. So this x to the negative 2 has to go into the denominator. That's x squared, and this is going to be multiplication. And 3 to the negative 1 has to go into the numerator, so that is 3 to the 1. Now, we use our rules of exponents. In our numerator, we have 2 plus 1. In our denominator, we have x, 2 plus 1. So we have 3 to the third over x to the third.
which is 27 x to the third. That's the correct answer. I could have done this problem, okay? Method two, use the quotient rule and subtract exponents. If you did it that way, that is fine. That's just, there's two ways to do this problem. I tend to think that students have an easier time just getting rid of those negative exponents and making them happy. But you could have subtracted the exponents for 3 and subtracted the exponents for x, and you would have gotten the same answer. So take another deep breath. And I want you to do the checkpoints on the next page on your own. Fortunately, I can't play music on YouTube because of the fact that there are um, there are copyright uh, rules for adding music to YouTube, so I can't do that. So I'm just going to do these problems silently. And you do them on your own. And then you can check my answers. Check with my answers. So I'm going to give you a head start.
right. So hopefully you did well with those. Remember, these notes are on my website so that you can go back to them. All right, so now we're going to use all of the properties. So here we have to remember order of operations. So we want to simplify this. Well, the first thing we want to do with order of operations is do parentheses. So our numerator is 2w to the negative 3x. We're going to distribute this to the exponents inside for each of these three factors is 1, so I'm going to get 2 squared w squared x squared. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do this a little different and you can decide which method you want. I'm going to use the quotient rule, same base, subtract the exponents. Right. So remember there's an implied one here and applied one there. So for the 2, it's going to be 1 minus 2 which is 2 to the negative 1. For the w, it's negative 3 minus 2, so that's w to the negative 5. And for the x, 1 minus 2, is x to the negative 1. So now what I'm going to do is I need to 3 change negative exponents to positive exponents. I put this all over 1 and all of the factors in the numerator are unhappy so they all have to go to the denominator. So what I'm left in the numerator is 1 2 to the negative 1 goes to the denominator and becomes 2. w to the negative 5 goes to the denominator and becomes w to the fifth. And x to the negative 1 is x. So that is your final answer. So I'm going to do number 5 with the same method, the quotient rule. And the first thing we do is we look at our numbers. 6 divided by 2 is 3. Then we have F. There's an exponent of 1, 1 minus 2. 
And then we have g negative 4 minus 2. So we simplify this. The 3 is simplified. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Negative 2 minus 2 is negative 6. And so now I've got to make my negative exponents happy. The 3 is happy just where it is. So you don't have to do anything. You have to move the F and the G. So F goes to the denominator. F is to the 1, which is an implied. You don't have to write it. G to the 6. All right, here again, power to power. We have to multiply. I think this is the easiest way to do this. We're going to get 3 to the negative 2, y to the negative 2, because it's 1 times negative 2, and z, 2 times negative 2. So we simplify that, and we have 3 to the negative 2, y to the negative 2, and z to the negative 4. All of these are unhappy. They need to become positive exponents. They're all going to go to the denominator. And remember, there's always an implied 1 here. So there's always something in the numerator. So then we're going to bring all of these down, 3 squared, y squared, z to the fourth, and the final answer is 1 over 9 y squared, z to the fourth. Almost done. Take a deep breath. Isn't this fun? If you go nice and slow, it's very easy. But if you try to rush it, you're going to frustrate yourself. So go through and do these problems slowly. Know your rules and your order of operations. So, pretend this is your quiz. I'm going to do these silently. And you're going to do them yourselves. Okay, so you start. Remember, there's more than one way to do this. Okay. I'll be showing both.
So for problem number one, there's two ways to do it. You don't have to do both ways. Choose the way that you're the most comfortable doing it.
All right, so that ends the discussion on negative exponents. Just letting you see the entire last page in full. And have a good day.